Does you now having second thoughts? Has the thought of leaving your spouse been running through your mind recently? Have you become tired of the state of your marriage? The devil will present you with many reasons you should quit that marriage and abandon your spouse. But these are the more reasons you should stay and fight to make it work. If you truly are a child of God, you will live by this principles and commands and that includes loving the things he loves and detesting those things he hates. One of those things is divorce, separation after being married. The Bible says in Genesis 2.24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Matthew 19.6 also says, Wherefore they are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Your union is a sacred one before God. And when you took your vows and made the promise to stay forever, God was a witness and a part of your joining. Just as the above scripture has said, no one should separate what God has joined. Not even your parents have the right to make you abandon your spouse. Don't get carried away by doctrines that encourage divorce. The Bible is clear on that matter. God hates divorce, and it should not be encouraged among believers in any way. It is easy to take a look at your relationship and conclude that it is over. After all, everyone is getting a divorce these days, and it is no longer news that a happily married couple today could become separated the very next day. Don't join them and become part of the increasing statistics. Despite all of the discouragements and incidents that plan to bring you down, remember that God hates divorce, and it is for a good reason. He does not wish that you endure or suffer in your marriage, but He also expects you to be faithful. So don't abandon your spouse. God doesn't want you to. Let's take a little walk down memory lane, back to the day when you got wedded to the man or woman of your dreams. It might have been all pomp and pageantry with your friends and family around you to join you in celebration, or it could have been a quiet ceremony involving just a few people. Whether traditional or modern, loud or quiet, one thing was common. You have gave your assent, said, I do, and made vows before God and man. You must have been excited to give no serious thought to the questions the clergyman or whoever was officiating threw at you. All you wanted was to be married and to have started life together already. Without hesitation, you promised to stay through thick and thin, in all health and sickness, for better or for worse. You must have thought, doesn't it get better by the day, or what's the worst that could happen? If you are considering leaving your spouse, then you must have begun to experience some of those things. Your spouse may be sick within the grasp of death, or maybe they become invalid or disfigured from an accident. Would you abandon them at this point? It could be a financial crisis, and you, who have become accustomed to a pampered life, are now faced with poverty and lack. What would be your reaction? Would you stay or would you go? Hear what the Bible has to say concerning vows in Ecclesiastes 5 to 4. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. When thou vowest and vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Marriage vows should be well thought out before anyone takes a plunge and once you decide to go down that road, then stick with it. You will definitely meet other people who are wiser, stronger, healthier, more beautiful or handsome, and more intelligent that might be interested in you even after you are married. At times like this, it takes the grace of God and a strong determination to remain faithful, especially when there is a crisis in your marriage already. When you are tempted, remember God's faithfulness and your own pledge to remain faithful and stick to your vows. Once you get married, 
You are no longer two individuals, but one. Your souls are now merged, and you have two hearts beating as one, metaphorically speaking. The union of your heart and souls is consummated physically on your marriage bed. In essence, you share a lot of things in common and have something binding you. When you choose to leave your spouse, what you do is try to break the bond. In doing so, you not only break the bond, but leave a permanent scar in both your lives. This is a scar that will haunt you throughout your lifetime and might lead to a whole cascading event of a disaster. Imagine if children were already involved. What would happen to them? How would you expect your act of abandonment to affect their lives? What about the spouse in question? And what about yourself? After sharing so much together, do you think you will be whole when you leave? The truth is that a part of you will always remain with them and vice versa. It doesn't matter how bad the situation may be. The moment you decide to stay, you are one step towards getting the solution to your problem. Even if you have made a mistake at a point of marriage, with God, all things are possible. It may be that you married an unbeliever in your ignorance or based on your refusal to heed instruction. It is not too late for you through your behavior and attitude, demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit at all times. You might end up winning over your spouse. You might not realize it now, but that person needs you just as much as you need them. If you leave, they'll be heartbroken and hurt and you now allow the devil to succeed in disrupting one more home. So, for both of your sakes, that of your children if you are blessed with them and those watching you, stay and stick to your spouse. This is an age where people are used to shortcuts and quick fixes from the food we eat to something as important as marriage. Once things aren't going their way, the next option is to quit and move on. This should not be. But then, what can we do? One thing you can do is not to conform to the world. Choose to be committed to your marriage, and no matter the cost, see it that it works. The more you focus on making it work, the less you'll think about leaving your spouse. No matter the challenge that rises up, stand up to it like the champions that you are. You have God's backing because He never wants to see any home broken. There is no break from marriage, and you cannot give up on your spouse just yet. Include them in your prayers daily. Fight that war on your knees. That's the assurance that you will stand in victory because prayer never fails. Except in life-threatening cases, which calls for proper counseling and direction, do not for any reason abandon your spouse. As you fight for your marriage and home in the place of prayer, you will see things begin to turn around for good. Shalom.